Hi there. Welcome to Test Roll. I am Martin. I'm Lawrence. That's Baby. That's Baby over here. You can't see him right now, but we have the, the white dog here. It's Spike. He's our uh, white balanced dog, and a Baby, of course, is our brown balanced dog. You're going to see him around here, and I do apologize, but this was the, the least painful way to do this. Today, we're going to do a, um, a little segment on this camera that Lars had been telling me about for years and only recently did he actually bring it over and show me. It's um, an Alpa Prisma Reflex. Obviously it's a beautiful camera, it's this beautiful design, but it is very strange to me and we're gonna have some fun with putting some film through it and seeing what it can do. Lars, you wanna tell us about it a little sure. bit? It's a Swiss-made camera. Uh, the company I, I apparently was making other things, and they just decided to diversify, and they thought, well, let's make a camera. And they decided to go with a very high-end, small production-run camera. This was a result. Uh, pro this may not have been the very first design, but these were designed in the late 30s. Then World War II came along. After the war, they started producing these things. Uh, this one was probably made in the late 40s, possibly even the early 50s. But if you gave me this camera and asked me what year was this designed, I would assume sometime in the 1930s. It is an SLR camera, a single lens reflex, which, you know, you look through this pentaprism, you know, it bounces around and then you look through the lens. And that's great for composition and focus and stuff like that. It, it allows you a great deal of precision in you know, creating your image. However, they didn't seem entirely uh, convinced of the uh, efficacy of that, as it also has a rangefinder, <laughs> which is like, huh, an SLR with a rangefinder. That's a little weird. You're going to get it one way or the other. Yeah, but you know, it's like if you look through here, mm -hmm. and if if I actually sight through there and I turn the focus of the lens, there is a rangefinder patch, hmm. and it's cammed to this lens, and it actually works. The shutter selecting your shutter speed is a little bit different. When I first looked at the camera, I was utterly confused. Um, you solved the problem because, you know, you have this, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Leica 3? In, in those early ones, they split up the fast shutter speeds and the slow ones. And that's kind of like what's going on here. If you look closely at the shutter speed dial, some numbers are in red. Uh, pretty much the slower speed. So one second, half a second, a fifth, and one tenth are in red. And the faster shutter speeds, 1 25th to 100, 1 thousandth, are in black. And you discovered this lever, you know, can go down to this little tiny red dot here. Uh, yeah. And that activates the slow, sh uh, the slow shutter speed mechanism. This took us hours, by the <laughs> yes. way. We're just like, I don't know. Yeah. I think that kind of leads into why I never saw this camera when I was a kid. Because my father went to an estate sale and bought a couple of fairly high-end cameras in probably 1981. He had come home very excited and it's like, oh boy, you know, it's like I've got these cool cameras, I want to play with them. Shortly thereafter, he went into this deep depression and I never quite knew the story. But I think what happened was he was looking at this camera and he just decided, I have wasted a huge amount of money. And, uh, and so I never actually saw the thing in person until after he passed away. It sat in this bag in his closet for good, almost what, 40 years, untouched. And yet it actually seems to still run pretty well. It is shockingly well made. I yeah, I I couldn't quite believe that the the shutter came back so readily. 
But what do you say we uh, uh, load up some rolls and yep. go out and shoot with this thing and um, see if we want to pull our heads off? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Shoot some 35. Oh, good God. Oh, no. <laughs> this is horrible. There's a lot of deflection in there. Portrait taken. So, up right there, just lean against. Yeah, there you go. There you go. If it comes out, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Gonna do some action photography with this. All right, well, we're back. Uh, we've uh, gone around and we've shot with the Alpha Prisma Reflex and we've got our negatives, we've got our scans on the on the uh, device here. Oh, that's neat. This, I don't know why I shot this apart from I thought it looked nice. Uh, the, you know, the fence with the weird, I don't know what this plant is. It's got to be something Australian. Looks Possibly. really, yeah, it, really it, freaky. Yeah, it looks like it wants to kill you. Yeah, that's got to be Australian. Yeah. You know, there is good texture in the mm -hmm. highlights, um, and it's resolving pretty well. I mean, the lens oh, yeah. uh, resolves these textures in the paint and uh -huh. the, the wood grain reasonably well. Okay, so here we get to the LA River shots, and uh, um, basically, I was shooting. And here's the sun right in the center of the frame, and uh, you know, getting beautiful. You know reflections off the water and you know halation and and you know I like the uh, the rim lighting on the edges of the leaves. Mm -hmm. I have these various shots uh, where we're essentially you know looking at the sun and uh, great great with an uncoated lens. Yeah. <laughs> oh we're that's back neat. To another like vertical uh, looking across the river You're, at the setting sun. Yeah. It's working surprisingly well. I mean you still get fairly deep blacks in the shadows. It's kicking a huge amount of light into that lens. Uh huh. Um, but it's not and it, it it actually survived. I mean, it worked. Yeah, I wouldn't expect it to yeah. look that good. Uh, and then here, ha! <laughs> <laughs> here's a lovely shot. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I decided. Let's see what the thirty-five millimeter lens does. Uh, let's let's get this out here. So here it is. This is the old Delph Alphanar, and the front element looks fine, but nobody put anything to protect the back element, which is right there. I think whoever owned it just Very didn't, scuffy. <laughs> yeah, did not believe in lens caps. So yeah. that rear element is just has a nice, nicely sandpapered. Uh, yeah. As if you had a good quality copy of this lens without the scratching, mm -hmm. it would probably. Probably look pretty good. Yeah, you know, it'd probably uh, be a decent 35 millimeter lens. Um, this is not a decent 35 millimeter. No, lens. that's too bad because that yeah that yeah if they're they're not cheap. Yeah, this is the 135. That's the the Elmar. Uh, the last one here is the 135 Elmar. Now what and we're talking about is something that was originally made for a Leica, and then fitted with a Alpa mount. This looks like a 1930s Leica lens. I, I didn't look up the serial number, but I'm almost sure that this is a 30s version. I was actually pretty surprised with how sharp and clear and contrasty the, the 135 was. Oh, yeah. Um, um, they're known for making pretty decent lenses. Uh, I've got a couple uh, 
Leica lenses that are, aren't too bad. Yeah. It's able to capture a number of different levels of tone. Uh -huh. um, the sharpness of detail visible in right. those wires. I like the cross lighting of the texture of the mountains mm -hmm. in, in the rear. I think that's that kind of makes that shot really yeah. cool to me. Uh, would you like to take over and uh, All right. show us your uh, shots? Or? So speaking of that same lens, this was one that I shot across the street. Now the one thing I noticed, you can see how we've got vignetting almost on the sides, or it's mm -hmm. darker on the sides here, but we're having flare, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. Uh, everything, the, the blacks are fairly gray in yeah. that middle, and here's another shot with it of you looking kind of annoyed that I'm greeting you. <laughs> And again, we're getting dark in the corners, but, but, yeah, but we don't have any dark shadows here. And I'm almost sure what's been happening is that I wasn't blocking the light entering through this viewfinder. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is light leaking through that viewfinder while the picture's taken. That makes a lot of sense because I think, if I remember right, when I was shooting with this camera, I had to take my glasses off and I had my eye pressed to it, so I didn't really see as much of this effect as you did. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is something you took of me, which is a far better shot of me than I deserve. <laughs> um, but I really like how that looks. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, um, uh, this has to be the 50. Oh, and there's the 35 millimeter. <laughs> yes, and that's the one where I was shooting that and just going... This is utterly insane. The only way I could focus it was I was looking at the rim of the, your glasses. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. So here are uh, power lines, and I think this was the walkabout that we did around here. Yeah. Um, so that's a cool cactus. Um, and there is the fella at the coffee place. I think he's doing air guitar, or he's about to flip me off. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure which. <laughs> Take the friggin' picture already. <laughs> he just wishes I'd go away. I, I don't blame him. <laughs> this is a scary shot of my friend Raymond, who was un unlucky enough to come over when I was just messing around with the camera. And he's having tea. It's a shot where I actually did have a lot of light from an overhead lamp, this, mm -hmm. like giving a veiling flare on the lens. Yeah. However, the, 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 the thing that I like about this, this is probably a one second shot um, hmm. in um, you know wide open at my uh, dining room table. Ray didn't move uh, very much and I didn't move very much and it's uh, reasonably sharp for just basically a grab shot so i hope ray still speaks to me and this i think would have been what i would have considered the best <laughs> shot of the entire role but i only got a part of it before i hit the end the light yeah. struck end so i guess that's it how was it for you working with this thing? I mean, obviously you were able to get some pretty decent shots out of this. If, if this was the only camera I had, I would give up photography. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. <laughs> I hate this thing. It's, I mean, yes, you, you can take a good photograph with this thing. This was an early version of the SLR, and people were still trying to figure out, well, you know, how do you use this kind of form factor in terms of a camera? I mean, okay, the absolute worst thing I, I found about this thing that just drove me nuts is I like to shoot a lot of verticals. And so you're shooting a vertical, but since you have to look into the viewfinder at this diagonal, you sort of end up twisting your head. And I found that I would twist my head a little bit to view into the viewfinder, but in the process, I would turn the camera, so I'd twist my head a little bit more. And I would just, it was this progression where I'd be sort of like twisted around in this weird configuration. And I don't, I don't need any of this insanity, you know. But what are your thoughts on? Um, I thought you were about right. I found it actually kind of painful to use. Uh, it was uncomfortable. I mean, I kind of got the mechanics of it enough to be able to use it. And I can't imagine 
anybody would want you to work that way. I mean, I think these guys all were eating peyote or something. I can't imagine they would have even, in a completely drugged out state, would want you to to try to work that way. Which might have been what led my father into that deep depression. I totally get it. I really see it. It's a depressing camera. If you like playing with the history of the technology and you like, you know, sort of experiencing what it would have been like to shoot in the uh, 1940s with, you know, a premium camera, but definitely a primitive form of SLR, then yeah, it's a great camera to have fun with. But then you then you go with your you know, your Pentax or whatever and get a good picture. You would make view cameras look you know kind of easy to use and you know. <laughs> well, that monstrosity is a lot easier to well, use. Well, that's the thing. Sense. Yeah, we were we were talking you know some time ago about cameras that are point and prey, and this is a point and prey. You know, just. I don't know what I'm taking a picture of, actually. I am pointing it, and maybe it'll be good. This is technology getting in the way of taking pictures. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm sure the uh, rangefinder Leica was still a very strong contender throughout the 50s and into the 60s. It was fun messing with it, uh, sort of. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm glad to have used this camera so I never have to use it again. It's well, like, this is far from a crappy camera, but it is not friendly. and It is. Uh, it's I, user belligerent. It really is. <laughs> so if you, if you feel like you need to be taken down a couple of pegs, use one of these for a while, and it'll, it'll, it'll bring your humble level way up. Oh, yeah, this is a good camera for breaking photographers. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. This is a great collector camera for your shelf. Uh, interesting to look at, but I, I would definitely be shooting with something else. Anyway, we'll, we'll see you next time, and uh, we'll, we'll work on our egos between now and then. Hopefully we'll still want to take photographs after that. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I know, it's very cute, isn't it? Yes.